Republicans would stop implementing the same silica standard that exists in every other American workplace, which would doom thousands more miners to a painful death via black lung. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? We're going to start off with last week in Southern Labor, and we've got a bunch of updates in uh, strikes and bargaining and uh, policy and politics. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. Here is what workers in the U.S. South and the American colonies were up to on the week ending on the 17th of November. In new NLRB filings, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, IBEW, Local 60, filed a unit clarification petition regarding the 500 worker bargaining unit it represents at Big State Electric in San Antonio, Texas. Now, I'm not sure exactly what clarification is being sought. Typically, these petitions are used to expand or contract the bargaining unit. If I had to guess, I would assume it's an attempt to expand the unit based on the NLRB's new joint employer rule, uh, because the filing names, in addition to Big State Electric, uh, Subcontractors, Labor Max, Staffing, and Flex Tech, uh, and Flex Tech. Uh, so, if anybody knows more about that, then uh, I would uh, love to be uh, put in the loop. Two workers at Technica LLC in Fort Bliss, Texas, filed for a union election with the International Union of Operating Engineers, IUOE, Local 351. And uh, here's another one that I'm having trouble deciphering. Uh, lots of unconventional filings this week. An individual at Starbucks in Shivano Park, Texas, filed a petition to decertify Starbucks Workers United as the union representing the 22 workers there. But here's where it gets a little weird. Then... They withdrew that petition in the same week, and the case was closed. And the same day that case was closed, another decertification was peti petition was filed at the same location. And that case is still open. So uh, it's possible. I, if I had to guess here, my uh, I would assume that there was some kind of administrative error in the first decert petition, and so they filed another one. But I'm not entirely sure. Um, we'll keep an eye on it. Three workers at Transdev in Auburn, Alabama filed for a union election with the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Local 612. The Amalgamated Transit Union, ATU Local 1493, filed a unit clarification petition regarding the 200-person bargaining unit it represents at RATP Dev USA in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, here again, not exactly sure what clarification is being sought. 41 workers at Airport Aviation Services in San Juan, Puerto Rico, filed for a union election with the Union Independiente de uh, Trabajadores del Aeropuerto, uh, otherwise known in English as the Independent Union of Airport Workers. Additionally, three workers at the Harris County Democratic Party in Houston, Texas, filed for a union election with the United Professional Organizers. Uh, we had a few election results, starting off with a uh, not great one in in Fort Worth, Texas, where workers at Bimbo Bakery voted against unionization with the Bakery, Confectionery, Tobacco Workers, and Grain Millers International Union, BCTGM, Local 100, 0 to 5. Uh, those always hurt. Security guards at Omniplex in Herndon, Virginia, voted in favor of unionization with the Protective Service Officers United, 12 to 1. 23 school bus drivers at Durham School Services in Memphis, Tennessee, voted in favor of unionization with the Teamsters Local 667. And 20 workers at MLEX US, a marketing company in Washington, D.C., withdrew their request for unionization with the Washington Baltimore News Guild, Local 3. 2035. In uh, settlements, grievances, and unfair labor practices, Morgantown, West Virginia, local thir uh, 313 firefighters are in line to receive holiday back pay dating to 2014. Uh, so that'll be a nice check after the West Virginia State Supreme Court ruled in their favor in a case where the firefighters alleged they were not being paid everything that they were owed under state law during holidays. The case has been remanded back to the uh, Monongolia Circuit Court judge, uh, where they will oversee a process that determines how much exactly the city owes the 54 current and former firefighters in damages and award accordingly. So congratulations to them. In strike and bargaining updates, 700 Obamacare and Medicare workers staged the largest federal call center 
center strike in the history in history at Maximus call centers in seven states. And Alabama prison guard Jeremy Pelzer is accused of encouraging prisoners to murder a prison strike organizer who is incarcerated in the Limestone Correctional Facility. Mm. We just keep finding bad apples, and that's all there is to the story about cops and correctional officers. Is that right? Yep, that's what I'm being told. Editorial workers at Mississippi Today and Verite News New Orleans, organized into the Deep South Today Union, an affiliate of NABET CWA, recently began negotiations for a first contract with management after securing voluntary recognition in the summer. They say they are seeking higher, more equitable wages greater transparency and job security. Hey, five seconds. Just wanted to say that this is only possible because of our donors. If you want to see more of this, then consider donating yourself at tvlr.fm slash donate. UAW members at Matt Trucks have ratified the same national agreement by 93% that they had previously rejected by 73%. This comes after the union says that Matt Trucks declared they would not move any further and that the previous offer was a last, best, and final, and that if the workers did not ratify the agreement, they would implement the contract and permanently replace striking workers. The union also claims that they did win significant changes in the local agreements. BCTGM members who manufacture soy protein for IFF in Memphis, Tennessee, continue the strike that they began in June. And Hyundai has joined the chorus of non-union automakers clamoring to respond to the UAW's deals with the Big Three with a promise to raise wages by 25% by 2028. The difference between this commitment and the UAW's is that the UAW has a contract with the Big Three, but Hyundai can just as easily go back on this commitment between now and 2028, and uh, if and when they do this, it will not receive nearly the same national and local coverage as the promised wage gains. These details were not relayed in Alabama's right-wing propaganda outlet Yellowhammer News when they reported on Hyundai's magnanimous announcement. In fact, their article did not even so much as mention the UAW. Starbucks Workers United claimed that last week saw their biggest labor action at the company yet, with some 5,000 workers striking at 200 stores, including several in the South. Like with negotiations at UPS, the Teamsters have begun rolling out tentative agreements on specific issues at Anheuser-Busch. Last week, they announced that they, that they were able to get the company to restore retirement benefits for active and retired members and eliminate the two-tier health insurance system currently in place, where new employees pay hundreds of dollars more for insurance than tenured employees. Workers at Anheuser-Busch breweries in St. Louis, Missouri, Jacksonville, Florida, Houston, Texas, Texas, Williamsburg, Virginia, and Cartersville, Georgia are members of the Teamsters Union and are implicated in these negotiations. In policy, politics, and legislation, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution reports that Georgia House Republicans are looking at full Medicaid expansion. Wow. Uh, we'll see. Uh, believe it when I see it, I right. guess, is the appropriate uh, the appropriate response to that. Democratic Florida State Representative Angie Nixon filed legislation to reestablish a State Department of Labor, which would finally empower a state agency to investigate and prosecute wage theft. She has filed this year this bill every year since 2020 without success or attention. The same representative in Florida has also filed legislation to make landlords provide air conditioning to tenants, which is somehow not already mandatory in Florida. Chambers County, Alabama is planning to close two area schools and merge them into one. Two teachers were arrested at the school board meeting for protesting the plan. The municipality of Portsmouth, Virginia, voted to allow its employees to unionize last week after a campaign primarily led by International Association of Firefighters affiliate, the Portsmouth Portsmouth Professional Firefighters and Paramedics Union, Local 539. Republicans in the U.S. Senate tried and failed to repeal Biden's new student debt repayment, which does not require payments of debtors whose income is below 60000 The same Republicans support a repeal of the estate tax, which would give Elon Musk's family a $100 billion tax break.
Republicans in the U.S. House, meanwhile, successfully passed amendments to funding bills out of committee that would cut salaries of OSHA and MSHA officials to $1 and would stop MSHA, the Mine Safety and Health Administration, from implementing the same silica standard that exists in every other American workplace, which would doom thousands more miners to a painful death via black lung. The bill also cuts the already meager budget of OSHA by 15%, but but that wasn't enough for one Republican member who proposed to eliminate OSHA's budget in its entirety. A new Senate report released shocking findings that nursing homes with higher staffing ratios provided better and safer care. Specifically, it found that nursing homes that do not meet the proposed minimum staffing standard are much more likely to have serious deficiencies that cause harm to residents and that nursing homes with lower staffing levels are much more likely to have patient abuse. 4.5% of nursing homes that already have adequate staffing to meet the Center for Medicaid Services proposal have the abuse indicator in nursing home compare. In contrast, 8.5% of nursing homes that do not meet the proposed Center for Medicaid Standards uh, standard have the abuse indicator in nursing home compare. Nearly twice as much, wow. Nearly twice as much abuse at uh, nursing homes that do not meet uh, recommended staffing le- levels. Uh, again, a very shocking finding from the U.S. Senate. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project. And you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm. 